everybody, I just fit the ferals and my contractor friend stopped by and I put treats in there. I didn't plug it in last night because it's really warm and I wanted to check with my friend about these uh, cables and he said this one should be fine. He said do the one with the one thing and the two plugs. And uh, so if it, if it gets cooler tonight, I'll put it in. If not, I'll just keep, start, uh, keep getting them used to using the, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, having the treats in there and getting used. So one of them just went running. Uh, they haven't finished all their food. My friend came and I showed him the shed. And um, uh, I, I thought I might as well quickly cut the grass. So I'm going to do this quickly. And then um, uh, uh, tomorrow is the um, is the planned trip to uh, with the U-Haul to get the rest of his stuff from Toronto. So, uh, you know. Everybody, I uh, went out, I had Harvey's, I switched cars, and I came back, I fed the ferals just before, before it got dark, and I saw the other two <laughs> coming out of hiding, uh, the BC, only after I came in, but the Jill was right at the back, she was watching, and uh, Peanut's not very hungry these days, but you know, I guess it's not a bad sign, they're getting well fed, and they eat a lot of dry, and they eat uh, twice a day, so... But they ate, you know, and I don't know if they finished it all. And I didn't turn on the heated chest because I don't think it's that cold. And then I um, I came back and, and you know, turning on the, uh, the, the the plug means another thing to worry about. <laughs> Worrying about whether they, you know, uh, they get an electric shock or something. So I'd, I'd keep looking out the window. I'll have to do it when, when it gets colder, but right now it's not. It's not. I'll let them get used to the shelters first. I'm putting lots and lots of treats in them. They don't seem to be using them, uh, except to go in and have treats. But they probably will when it gets colder and they realize it's warm in there. So um, after I came in, I showered, I fed the kids, and... <laughs> Uh, I was organizing the stuff for tomorrow a little bit, you know, because of making the day trip in the U-Haul and I confirmed it and, you know, uh, getting everything ready and uh, the locker number and everything I need and uh, the unit number. So I was doing all of that in the in the dining room and I fed these kids and I come here and, oh, one, two, three. Okay, <laughs> so um, tomorrow kids are going on a day trip, but it shouldn't be too late, you know, and I'm going just to go get some stuff. So uh, anyway, now I'm just going to work on the journal entry and try to go to bed early and I'll have something very light. Good morning everybody, it's about 7.30 a.m. Uh, and Agitha was running that way and we've got one of the babies there under the dining table and we've got the other baby here playing in the living room, you know. And I have all the lights on, I've been up for almost an hour and this is because today is the day of the day trip. Um, uh, myself and my friend, my contractor friend in the U-Haul to pick up some um, some stuff from storage in Toronto and we're not actually going to stop at the condo, we're just going to get the stuff so I don't have to keep paying uh, storage and there's some furniture in there and there's some boxes that have to be stored in the garage. So, um, got up, uh, I had drama, of course, there's drama llama at night. I'm trying to go to bed early and uh, then I end up getting another, you know, sort of um, uh, text from, from the past, from, you know, from, from my slithering days, you know. <laughs> um, so all of that, you know, uh, all of that doesn't really help, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's something that you have to deal with, you know. So, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'm clear and I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm making it, you know, <laughs> which is, you know, 11 weeks is, you know, it's, it's been tough, but, uh, but, uh, and I've said this before, I'm, I consider myself very, very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to leave town. A lot of people don't have that. There are people struggling with, you know, uh, with the personal issues and, and uh, you know, uh, addiction stuff and so on. Uh, I had this option. Now, there, there's some downsides to my situation as well. It's kind of very isolated. That's just me and the kids. And now, now I've got the, um, uh, you know, the, the feral kids. And I've got really good neighbors, and I've got friends that I have email text contact with. I've got my contractor friend here, you know. So, there, there's, you know, but on the whole, um, I, I, I'm really lucky to be able to have uh, bought this house and left town, you know, and, and, and making it 11 weeks, and you know. So, uh, and these, these things, like going to get the, the stuff and so on, 
Oh, that I like, you know, I like to get it prepared and just uh, something to do. And I, I even warned my neighbors. <laughs> I said, look, <laughs> things might be a little unusual. The fact that I'm up early morning before they go to work and I have the lights on. Uh, plus, uh, we'll be unloading the truck at night and that kind of thing. So I just let my neighbors know, look, you know, um, uh, I am making the day trip. And we try not to be too late in unloading stuff. If we have to, we can do it the next day. So I uh, did all of that. And then I go, um, I go to bed, and uh, so I, I replied to the um, to the DDOW, uh, you know, but uh, uh, you know, I said I'm clear, and I just kind of like, you know, just uh, uh, I said all is well, and then, and I think um, they wish me luck, and I wish them luck, and then, uh, and then I'm lying in bed, and I had the travel cases there, those ones. Uh, uh, particularly the soft ones there, you know? So uh, the soft ones are uh, the boys' travel cases. And I had them there, and I uh, uh, like to sleep in one of them, in one of, you know? Um, and this has happened before, a couple of days ago, she got her paw, uh, her nail, her front nails have not probably ever been cut, just because of how she behaves at the vet. And, you know, uh, her back nails, the local vet actually trimmed them, because you know when she was sick, but he could even even in that state he couldn't do her front nails. And um, a few days ago, her, one of her paws got stuck in the uh, in in the mesh, you know, in that uh, uh, front part of the you know the, the meshy thing. And I don't know if it was a mesh or it's actually sort of uh, where the door and the uh, is it's not that one, it's this one, you know. So somewhere in there. In there, the uh, and I wasn't sure if it was actually stuck in that uh, in that uh, uh, wool thingy or uh, and she was screaming and it happened a couple of days ago and I kind of in that state it's very hard to get near her and the boys are all worried and they're nearby and I'm like oh, don't get too close and I'm trying to free her I don't have bike gloves uh, using a towel I got I, I got her free the other day like within a minute two minutes. Yesterday, it was like, I don't know how she got it stuck that badly, but she is screaming and I'm trying to free her paw without getting mauled myself because in that state, she's not herself, you know, she's, she's full, you know, kind of possessed mode, you know, kind of like me and binges. So, so she's like just screaming, you know, and uh, hissing and trying to bite and just not herself and in the end, it took five, six, seven minutes, but in the end, with a towel, I didn't have a bike glove, with a towel, uh, with a thick towel, I managed somehow, I don't know how, to get her uh, paw free. And I was, I, was, I was getting ready to cut the whole thing. It's, it's, it's the softer case. So I was ready to get scissors and, you know, and just, just cut, cut the whole final thingy there. But that would have been very dangerous. No need for you to go in just because the closet door opened. I'm showing, I'm showing the case. Yeah. So that was drama. That was like you know, one o'clock at night. Then everybody's adrenaline is up, and you know, and she came right away. And instead of sleeping in that room, she came and slept on the bed here. And both the boys slept there, you know, because they ever, we had our little minor trauma. So, so hopefully that was a trauma lama and the rest of the video goes well. Anyway, everybody here in the storage unit, this is all the stuff that has to go. It's not a lot, but still for two people, there's boxes and there's furniture, okay? Uh, we had a very nice trip here. It was nice to be not driving by myself. My friend was driving the truck and uh, now we just have to get everything into the truck and get it there. Bye for now. He says the boxes go in the garage, furniture goes into the house. My friend that he's like slave driving me. We haven't had a break. I've got a union rules, union rules. So he's unloading those boxes and I've got a, fortunately there's a chair. I'm getting like a 30 second break. You know? so, oh, I'm not used to this, uh, this physical uh, labor, you know. Many professors, like a, it's like a feral cat, you know, or a house cat or some kind of cat. Cats try not to do physical work if they can help it. Bye for now. Almost done, look at that! Almost like professional movies! Uh, daddy professor is loaded up well with my contractor friend. So now there's one carpet and then we head back. Bye for now! Holy shit, look at that! Empty! Empty! It's like 2.15. It's uh, about uh, three hours. Two hours. Wow! Uh, uh, my contractor friend didn't even give me a, a, a wrist break. Hi everybody!
he's a nutty professor, we got off his thing, we load him to the truck and we're on our way back to scenic channel material, uh, uh, beating the traffic, I don't know, the nutty professor works, manual labor, no brakes, nothing, I don't know. Stopping in Woodstock to, you know, get something to eat, making really good time because we didn't get traffic, we had a good, so there's the, uh, there's a the U-Haul. We are here, we unloaded half the uh, truck, you know, and got some into the garage, some into the house. And uh, we have the uh, truck for 24 hours, uh, for 48 hours. So I'm just going to go in, feed the fear, all feed the kids, um, unwrap the sofa, stuff like that, and then uh, go to bed. And then tomorrow morning, my contractor friend comes and we um, uh, uh, we finish uh, unloading and return the truck. And then, then I'm going to be unpacking. Look at me busy for a while. Bye for now. It's now the next day, around 5 o'clock, and there's a Gita very comfortably settled, and it happens to be Gita's 14th birthday today. So, happy birthday, Gita, you know. We got some extra treats and some chores and stuff, and uh, and the boys are playing here. We got one, uh, one, uh, one baby here, and we got the other baby, I just saw running around here somewhere. I saw a tail. I saw a tail. He's in there. The other baby is here. All this time we didn't play with the uh, tunnel. Now there's, there's so many boxes and things to play with. Now he's like going, oh, look at the tunnel. So we got both the babies playing here. Lots of boxes. And uh, today uh, I had a, um, you know, three, four hours sleep last night. A little bit of trouble getting to sleep. Just so tired. All the physical labor and all the excitement of the trip to Toronto and the U-Haul and stuff, but um, I did get a good night's sleep and uh, got up in the morning, spent some time with the kids, and was just feeding the feral, I fed the kids, was feeding the feral when my um, uh, contractor friend arrived, started unloading the U-Haul. So, um, uh, ended up, um, one sec, uh, ended up, Unloading the U-Haul, rest of the boxes, rest of the uh, the cabinets, you know, and I kind of had them bring in on the dolly and you know, put one there, put one there, just to get it sort of. I don't think they're gonna move now. Once we, once they're in place, I'm not gonna move them, you know. I I switched these two around because you know. Um, but other than that, I uh, got everything in, and then I had to um, go drop the truck. So I took the mini. He took the truck. Dropped the truck. I paid him, you know, what I owed him for the work. I had to stop at the bank. And then I uh, came back. He picked up his truck and left. And after that, I was feeling a little bit... I did a few things. I moved this there and I got the table and I put the top in. And I just removed all the packing from those things. You know, the people who packed them up years ago. It's like all um, cardboard and uh, plastic wrap. and So they're in pretty good shape, you know. So now there's, my parents have uh, more crystals and you know, porcelain figures and stuff like that. That was their collection. Um, and there's still some in the condo. They took some with them, you know, so to, to, to India. So we've got, uh, you know, uh, but this stuff has been in storage and paying, uh, you know, storage fees for all of this for the and the furniture. And the furniture is the most useful to me because I didn't have any coffee tables here, you know, uh, or even a sofa, and I've got a small one here. So, now the the cabinets, I, I'm not into the porcelain, uh, or the, you know, the, the kind of kitsch, really, you know, knickknacks. So I'm not really into that, but um, it's there, and you know, it, it's, uh, it's not really worth a lot, but it's, you know, sentimental value, and my parents put it together all over these years, and was just sitting in storage, just paying you know, for the storage, might as well just, rather than leave it in boxes in the garage, might as well just display it, some of it at least. Particularly any animal figurines, any cat figurines, there are some. No, actually, actually, I think those are still in the condo. But any animal figurines and some crystals that I like, I'm just going to space them out in these things. And that will also get rid of these boxes, and then I don't have to store. There's still some in the garage too that have to be unpacked, but these are the ones like my mother has dolls, and I'm I try to go and give those away, <laughs> you know. But uh, so that's what's been happening, you know. Hey everybody, we've got both of the babies there up on the counter, and we've got a Gita here, and. Uh, the cat from next door was just uh, the front window. <laughs> One of the boys got kind of shocked. He's like, going, 
somebody looks just like me is outside the window. <laughs> so, so everybody's running around, and we've got uh, today. I'm going to have to start unpacking the boxes. And the other thing I wanted to show is, you know, we've got all three ferals out there: we've got Jill and Peanut, and uh, that uh, brown cat, BC. It's 2:22, so I guess that's half of 4:44. And I'm having uh, my uh, my favorite uh, Korean teriyaki shrimp uh, lunch uh, place very close to my uh, house. Five minute walk. And um, you now the people, they bring hot sauce and hot pepper and soap. And <gasps> it's excellent. Absolutely excellent. Now, the news is, had a good night, had a good morning. But the pulls have been very strong. I guess, you know, just the whole, you know, so for 11 weeks and, um, you know, uh, finally starting to just get, you know, uh, uh, to ramp up. I guess okay, there have been stressors. I mean, positive. It worked out well, the trip to uh, Toronto and bringing back all the stuff and all of that, but I was kind of anticipating it and worrying about it, and then it happened and it turned out okay, but now there's all the unpacking to do, which I'm kind of putting off, so I'm going to try to unpack when I start when I get back. So at least I have to place things in place with but I guess all of that stuff just kind of going, and it's 11 weeks. Uh, I'm very lucky that, you know, I, I don't know about luck, but, uh, you know, that was one of the points of the move out here, is that I'm three hours away from, you know, from the opportunities, you know, <laughs> from, from the slither and the party. So, you know, at least the, the you know, uh, the sources that I'm used to. So, and it's very hard, very, very hard to find out here, so, which is a good thing. Could probably find it, but it's not. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, it's a good thing. It's very hard uh, for me. And, uh, so I'm just uh, going through, just going day by day, day by day, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of choice. Hello everybody, here I am opening the boxes, but I haven't even got to the actual boxes of of China yet. I'm just opening the. They packed it so well. The people who packed it uh, years ago. Uh, at the condo, um, they packed all the shells, and one of the boys is there, we're getting a bit of help. So there were like six, seven of these um, boxes, cabinet glass shells, so I'm opening them up, and like four shells, <laughs> eight shells comes out of each, and they've really, really, really packed it with uh, uh, with paper. So yeah, no, it, 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 uh, fortunately nothing got broken or anything, they've been storage for so long, but so they did a good job. But uh, now I'm trying to find, I'm opening these boxes and I'm like going, four shelves, four shelves come out and then another four shelves come out. And, um, so, and then I'm trying to find which shelves go into which shelves. Now, I also uh, uh, gave a couple of um, the cabinets because my, um, my contractor's wife has a shop and two, three years ago, uh, I, I know that I gave, um, he came to Toronto specifically to pick up a couple of the cabinets, and I gave a couple of boxes of stuff, not even knowing what was in it. Just going, yeah. And I think there were some dolls and some crystal, which she sold. And I just said, look, uh, I, I don't want any money from this. Just donate a part of the proceeds to a cat shelter, you know? But I think the problem was that I donated two cabinets, and I don't know, uh, you know, he had trouble. I think he took one of these boxes uh, of glass, but it was the wrong box for the cabinets that he had. And he was supposed to be finished the house in like six months. So I said, okay, when you finish the house in six months uh, and I bring all the stuff to, to Chatham, uh, then we'll open all the boxes. And I, it was two years later. Good morning, everybody. We've got Agita there. And we've got one of the babies here. And we've got one of the babies here. And then we got the fetals there. And the, that's the brown one, uh, BC. And uh, it's, it's wet, and I think the black one's there too. And they were both here. Um, I plugged in that thing last night, and I'm glad because uh, I just went out to unplug it because it's raining, but it's very light rain. I was going to unplug it, and then I saw the peanut was actually sitting in one of the shelters, one of the heated shelters. So I'm like, okay, I um, I just left it plugged in because uh, it's not raining hard and I think that thing's not getting wet. And if they're using it, then, then all three of them came and they were like, I put some extra dry food. It ran out in the in the bowls in that little alcove there. So I think they're, they're eating it now. All three of them came out. So I'm glad that you're making use of the shelters. Uh, and then the little bit of news that I have um, 
Uh, I don't think I taped it all yesterday because it kind of got busy for me or kind of, you know, eventful for me, you know, living as a hermit. But I had um, uh, some some neighborhood kid, like a teenager human kid, stopped by a couple of nights ago when we were un unloading the, 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 the truck and he asked if we needed help and we were like, oh, no, it's okay, we're, 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 man we're managing it. We, we did the rest of it the next day. And then, um, uh, but then he said his, his brother has a truck and he could take the, some of the junk in the garage. Uh, there's like an old mattress and stuff that could be thrown out to make room for the boxes. And, and uh, uh, he said they could drop by in a, in a day or two. And I said, fine, you know, I was going to get uh, the just junk people, but if it helps out local people, and you know, they can do it. And, you know, the same price or less, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm like, so... He dropped by yesterday with his brother, and then his, uh, they took the mattress and, you know, gave him a few dollars. And then um, and then I said, there was a big mess here. I was opening the, the boxes and, the, you know, which which, uh, which things fit and which didn't, you know. And it was a, this is a bit wobbly. And uh, there's some missing. That was there. That was there. There are some uh, pieces missing, and it was like there's paper everywhere and open boxes, and you know, for they had really, really packed up those uh, those glass shelves well. So I ended up. I said, you know, I'll pay you for a couple of hours if you can just help me with this. You know, just. Uh, <laughs> sort of morals aboard than anything else, but also, you know, moving the stuff around, and, you know, so in the end, um, he stayed, and, uh, and see, look, like, um, he's, uh, yeah, that's, that's missing, you know, so, um, that's missing, but, uh, so trying to figure out which glass things go where, and all of that, and then, you know, I'm not used to, I'm just not used to human teenagers, and, you know, I swear a lot more than I think than they used to, but maybe, I don't know, maybe they did. I just didn't, you know, back then I didn't really have much contact. And when I was a teenager, I had really no contact with other teenagers. So probably swore back then too, but maybe the swearing has just got... And I have this guy, he knows like some to swear because he's got Indian friends. He knows swearing in Punjabi, so, which is kind of similar to Hindi. And I'm like, hey, I know what that word means. And he's using it all the time. Like, I'm like, okay, you know, interesting. You know, it's a little different from cats. But, but it was kind of fun. It was kind of different. But look, all the paper got screwed up. And those, uh, those uh, big boxes that contain the... Uh, the shelves. Um, it got done. I mean, you know, it, it, he didn't do a lot of work, but it was, it was nice to have him around, you know. So I'm like, okay, so that was something very different. And then, at, uh, um, then I, I just dropped him off at the um, at the plaza, I guess. That's what human kids do. And then we had to go babysit and stuff. His niece. So, but, uh, so that was interesting. It was very different for me. The recycling truck is there, but they're not at the... As you know, they're not taking my neighbors yet. And then mine, and I was overstacked, so I don't know if they're going to take that or not. Let's see, you know. They didn't take the overloaded one, like I thought, and they didn't take the uh, the other recycling because I think he put plastic or the kid who was helping me put some of that uh, bubble wrap in it. And I wasn't sure if they'd take that or not. Like, you know, I was thinking about it, and I said, it's plastic. It's not it's not paper or cardboard. And she saw it. I saw her. She, she looked at it, and then she didn't take it. And then she took one. A, um, a sort of a Nepalese Indian restaurant attached to a convention center. Um, sort of like in a very off-the-beaten-path area of, of uh, Chatham. But uh, there is a convention center, and um, this is a restaurant attached to it. It's... Uh, very good. I'm having vegetarian momo. So these are the dumpling things. They fry them and it's got vegetable filling and they put um, sort of a chili sauce on top. Very, very good. Very spicy. I, I'm not a huge fan of momos normally, but I really like the way these are done. Buddy, I was just going to order a, a Coke and they didn't have Coke, there, so I went for um, uh, so I said Pepsi. And then she brought me the drink menu and I said, I don't really don't drink much. But then I'm like, I'm looking at the drink menu. And I said, hold off on the Pepsi for a minute. And I'm holding up, they're looking at the drink menu. And they have one that is like super spicy. It's called Fire in the Sky. Vodka, vermouth, chilies, ginger syrup, two ounces. Uh, it's got two chilies on it and $9. And she brings it. She said that. She said, oh, it comes with a green chili. I'm like going, this is amazing. 
Uh, okay, I'm not normally a fan of, uh, of alcoholic drinks, period. And when I do drink them, I like the really sweet ones, like the um, uh, that uh, Smirnoff ice, you know. Uh, but and this is not sweet. It's very, it's very it's just like sort of martini-ish, I guess, like a vermouth and whatever's in their vodka. Um, so it's not really to my taste. But you can taste the chili. They got a chili thingy there. They got little chili flakes, and it's going with this. That's the thing. This is spicy. Hey, I'm opening the box. I started one thing. This is, I think I packed some of this myself and some got done. It's like really well wrapped paper and bubble wrap. All that for like a little crystal candle thingy. <laughs> and I think that's some kind of mug. It's all the way down. Yes, you know, there's crystals and there's all kinds of candles and there's this and there's that and knickknacks and just, you know, they just, my parents just went, you know, this was their addiction. <laughs> it's just wild with this shit, you know. It's all pretty much kitsch, but, but anyway, some, some pieces are kind of cool. It's there, so I might as well display it. And then, um, yeah, there was some more drama llama today because I, I don't know, I, th I think I taped at the, um, uh, you know, hacker restaurant. It's in the convention center and the, uh, the food was very good, spicy, and they didn't have Coca-Cola product. They only have Pepsi and they don't drink Pepsi. So I had the, um, the cocktail instead with the green chili in it, which was very strong, but uh, I had a lot of food with it and it was time. But still, I was talking to the owner, this um, Nepalese woman, and I just said, you know, my parents are there and I'm doing this. And I, you know, I didn't mention the addiction part, of course, but uh, I did mention, you know, the, the other stuff and having been a prof. And she goes, and Indians, it's almost like, um, I think in Nepali, she's in Nepali, but in Nepali Indian. But she's like, um, um, and, you know, Indians are that, that, you know, Indian, you know, uh, kind of area uh, people. They're almost always... If I say something like that, they go, and you know, it's really none of their business. But I'm talking, and I had the I had the cocktails, and, were, uh, and there were no other customers at that point. There were two other tables, and they left. And then, uh, uh, and so I'm talking to her, and she goes, "Yeah, you should go visit your parents." And every time somebody does this, every time, you know, I tell them to fuck off. So I pretty much did. <laughs> so I, you know, I finished my food. I finished my drink. I said, "What up?" I paid, and I left, and I'm not going back. So. <laughs> Oh my grandpa. Then I went to buy some dry food for the funerals, and now I'm unpacking this stuff. One other little item of drama. Uh, so the other day, when I was making the trip to get the stuff, um, this uh, the sliding door got stuck in the closed position. <laughs> After I'd taken my shirt and come out, fortunately not while I was stuck in there. So, um, and then I had to go do the, you know, the move with my uh, former contractor friend, uh, who had been my handyman as well, and go, get back and we're unloading the uh, the truck with all the stuff. And I go, can you please open this because I, um, you know, I can't take a shower, you know, otherwise the other bathroom doesn't have a, a shower. And, uh, you know, so... He struggled and he struggled and he found a piece of wood and he wedged it underneath and he had me push up and over that way and we got it back into the uh, groove. It's not smooth, it's like that, but it was working. And then, so I, I used it, like it just pretty much, I only use this bathroom twice a day when I'm showering, otherwise I use the other one. So um, today, uh, after I came back, I'm, uh, well, I, yeah, actually, it wasn't just showering, I was just using the bathroom, so I opened it, you know, and then I it came out, and I closed it, and it went off the groove, and it was completely stuck, and I'm, like, panicking, and my friend is really busy, he's not very good at this stuff anyway, you know, so I'm like, God, you know, I gotta really find someone else, you know, but, uh, but anyway, you know, that's really why he doesn't watch these things, but anyway, so I'm like, um, uh, and, you know, there's a couple of other things he has to do for me, you know, which, uh, you know, it was kind of important to me, the, the doors for the cats, and they've arrived, the front door, the, and he's not rushing, I mean, he did help me with the thing, but I, you know, anyway, with the move, but I did pay. It, was, it wasn't just out of friendship, so I don't know, you know. But um, anyway, that, you know, I don't know if I should be talking about this publicly. As I said, he doesn't watch it. So um, I have very few people watch these, so it doesn't really matter. I could pretty much say anything. So I'm like, um, uh, uh, I'm like, what do I do now? How do I take a shower? And, you know, so 
I struggled and I struggled and I checked with my uh, next door neighbor who's very handy and he's not feeling very well but he said he could, he might be able to come tomorrow and have a look at it for me and in the meanwhile I struggled and I struggled and I struggled and I'm like you know put this thing underneath and I'm wiggling it and I'm doing it oops that my, my door fell so I ended up you know I somehow don't ask me how you know I got it open and now, because I don't want to keep opening and closing it, because, and the worst part will be if I get trapped inside. I was outside, it was okay. So I got a piece of, I got lots of cardboard from the boxes. So I got a piece of cardboard from the garage, and I fashioned my own door. You know, it's unbelievable how much stuff there is. You know, I'm not even half. This one was very well uh, packed. This was the professional packers who did this. Very. And in the one box, I'm not even halfway yet. Not even halfway yet, you know. So it'll fill this cabinet and some of that. And there's several more boxes. And the kids are helping. One of the boys is there. And, well, so much for the um, for the door. Come out. Come on. Come on. So much for my makeshift door. Come on. It's not clean behind the toilet. Come. Come. No, no, they don't have to go there, sweetheart. Daddy hasn't cleaned there. Of course, Agitha is just very nicely settled there. She's like going, I don't want anything to do with work <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> what dad and the boys do it. I'm not interested. Look at that. Man to the paper. And we haven't even, you know, not even halfway through the first box. Oh, anyway, it's a distraction. Bye for now. It's now a little while later. I fed the uh, ferals. Uh, I came in. I fed the kids. So, um, Agitha there. And... Both of the babies here. So, one of the boys is there, running around, and the other boy is there. So you got one, one of the babies there, and then I just say uh, one of them here, and under the bed, and then um, I get it there, and that's my uh, my makeshift door. I have to get uh, someone who's better at these things, you know. And then uh, I've got um, this. So this, believe it or not, is from one box. Hello everybody, I'm here at Cora's. Um, I'm having French toast. I haven't had French toast in a long time and they had the uh, Beyond Meat uh, sausages to go with it. But, um, it's not all that, you know, <laughs> the helping is not all that great. It's, uh, it's okay. I think I'd rather just have um, burnt cakes or, or the, their crepe omelette. But I wanted to try it and they had it with that. So, uh, and they got Tabasco and they had a bowl of latte, you know. So from here I'm going to go pet smart of course and then uh, maybe a little bit of shop, grocery shopping I haven't in a long time so that I won't have to eat out in the evening and try to get some, some uh, stuff to make sandwiches or something. So. Uh, uh, so I had a good night, uh, I had a good morning with the kids and fed the payrolls and exchanged uh, texts with the, with the neighbor um, and uh, uh, came out. Now after all this I want to go back and keep unboxing the, uh, the stuff from, uh, from storage. Bye for now. We just went to uh, uh, PetSmart and then to that uh, uh, superstore. Everybody says this is more expensive than it is a little bit, but uh, I get a bunch of, you know, like uh, buns and, you know, like a big, big bag of buns for like five bucks and then uh, smoked salmon stuff out top when I get back. Everybody, uh, this is the second box. There was actually two smaller boxes in this one big box. Well, um, this was professionally packed and really well packed. So, uh, and we've got one baby there, one baby there, and I filled up almost the second one. Okay. So, um, I'm going to pack all this stuff up. I might do another box. But, um, and Agitha wants no part of the work. <laughs> She's very comfortably settled there, you know, and... Um, the the cardboard kept falling down, so I'm using the door. I, I semi-fixed it, but you have to be very careful, otherwise it will get jammed again, you know? So I just do it very, very slowly, you know? So uh, I'm going to, and I did quite a bit of grocery shopping. That's the other thing. I, um, um, I bought uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, there was a superstore there. So I bought um, the big bag of buns for like, um, yeah. I think uh, $5, you know, there is uh, the small bag, one quarter of the size is like 
four dollars. So I don't know how I'm gonna finish all of those. And then I got, you know, all herbs and I get uh, cheeses and I get um, tomatoes and uh, green chilies and stuff like that. You know, I haven't actually been um, grocery shopping in a while, you know. Um, so I got it for me, that was like a major shopping, like, you know. So, or oh, apples, you know. So, um, uh, I don't have to get takeout tonight, or, you know. So I guess this stuff was my parents' addiction, you know, which is a lot safer, cheaper too, than other addictions, you know. <laughs> Bye for now. What do you later in the day? And the kids is there. And both of the babies are here in the living room. I'm going to be sitting on this uh, sofa. And it's not that I have a sofa. I'm eating. So I've got one baby there. I've got one baby there. Favorite, favorite spot in the um, in the window. And <laughs> it's going to face him that way, you know. Uh, and did two more cabinets today. There was a big mess here. So I cleaned it up. And now I'm about to have my supper. And for once, not take out, not eating out. I just, uh, I got a whole bunch of stuff, you know, so uh, tomatoes and olives and green chilies and um, smoked salmon and cheese. Buns, <laughs> like a huge pack of buns from Superstore. <laughs> it was only one dollar more for like 18 or 12, or I don't know, a lot, you know. Uh, 12, you know, or more than 12. It's a lot of buns, you know. So anyway, you know, so I'm going to eat two at a time. Uh, anyway, that's my supper. Bye for now. I had my sandwiches here, and both the boys are here, and Agitha came, after all the work is done, just for a quick inspection. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and everybody has got up because they want treats. We have early morning treats. Uh, just for having been good kids all night, you know, so got Akita running there, one of the babies there, then one of the babies there. And, you know, so we'll all have treats and then we'll, uh, we'll rest some more. And uh, I get everybody back into this section and she jumped up because she wants the treats. And I look out and um, I plugged in that thing. You can see it, where it's plugged in there. Uh, the cord, and you can see the little red light, uh, which is uh, on the extension saying that it's plugged in. You know. Hello, everybody. It's now the next day, and Agitha is very nicely settled there on the bed, as she usually is in the day. And both the boys are in this room. This is Elsie, because Elsie is the one who likes the uh, sofa, and this is uh, Finn. Uh, and I know that because he's the one who loves that cat bed in the window, you know. Now, um, it's the next day and we had a good night. Um, I plugged in the um, the shelter for the funerals at night and then I um, uh, came in and I did a little reading, exchanged emails with a friend and spent time with the kids. Uh, um, the boy settled on the bed with me um, and uh, Agitha was under the bed or in the other bedroom. And in the morning, more uh, another email with my out-of-province friend. And I had a long conversation with my father about his coll collection, quote-unquote. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not really very expensive. Uh, they, you know, uh, some of the pieces he might have spent too much on, but they're really, you know, they're, they're, they're not much for resale or anything like that. It's really much more that was his kind of, you know, uh, addiction and you know and his uh, his thing you know the their thing uh very compulsive it's very compulsive but it's really not my thing and i was just gonna leave them all in boxes you know in the garage or in the basement if i had a basement but since i don't have a basement i ended up and the cabinets are all here i decided i might as well just open them out so it's been a little bit of rechannel for me even though it's not my thing it's really not my thing. It's not my personality. It's not my interest. It's not my, you know, <laughs> I think you guys know what my interest is. Or well, to a certain degree. I, I don't reveal everything in, my, in, in the podcast, but you know, it's, it's, mine is a little less wholesome. But, um, you know, my... Uh, my addictions, but um, this, this one I suppose is safer, you know. So I'm just okay. Why not do it? You know, it's a rechanneling, and you know, it's um, it's quirky, and it's not like I have any visitors or anything. So I'm just gonna fill up the fucking cabinets, you know. So that's kept me busy, and actually going there—that was a big thing. 
going there in the U-Haul, picking it up out of all of this out of uh, storage, you know, and uh, so not having to pay that storage anymore and bringing it here and then deciding to just display it since I had the cabinets rather than leave it all in the garage. And so that was quite a, that was, that was uh, uh, an event that was a rechanneling and that was a distraction. A little bit stressful though, a little bit stressful as you know, um, and there have been polls, not that they haven't, and there have been, you know, there was some contact with, you know, the people from the past, you know, which doesn't help the cravings. What does help is that I'm so far from the city. That has been, as my out-of-province friend says, that's been a huge thing, that when the cravings have come at the 10-11 week mark, when the cravings have come, I'm very far <laughs> from being able to, you know, my, my providers and the, you could probably get stuff here here but it's 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 very different and very difficult and not not what i'm looking for so uh it would be you know and i'd, I'd rather not get into out here that was the whole point of coming out here so um you know uh there have been cravings but not super strong and it's really helped that i don't have the options here and th this kind of stuff the distractions helped and of course the biggest pushes of all the kids, you know, my, my own kids, of course, you know, and our routines here. And, um, of course, um, the ferals as well. Being able to look, they ask for so little, but being able to look after them and, you know, even little things like, you know, uh, a heated shelter that's cool and, and uh, you know, feeding them twice a day um, and providing the, the backyard for them and the, and the shelter and the shed and the deck and all of that. That's been uh, that's been huge for me. A huge, a huge uh, regenerating, you know, push. So it's been tough, but made it at times. Nothing, nothing as tough as it would have been in the city. So, so it has been, and and I've said this before. I do realize that I am fortunate that I have had the option, you know, to leave town and, and to come out here, you know. Yeah. So, um, and even then, it, it there has still been pulls, but there was no guarantees, but it's been better, you know. Yeah. So that's what's been happening. 11 weeks there, nine weeks here, I guess, in, in the house. So uh, from the four of us, uh, actually seven, I should say. So from Agita, from um, Elsie on the sofa and uh, Finn on the window perch and from the ferals out there. Oh, I think I don't know if they're uh, in the shed or they're under the deck or you know, they're in the bush. You know? So from um, Peanut, Jill and BC and of course from uh, Agita. Elsie, who's got up and is running this way. And Finn, still in the, in the cat bed there. And myself. So now I'm going to maybe do another box, if I can, and then go out to upload this thing, because I still don't have internet, you know? So, um, uh, from the seven of us, I guess, you know, <laughs> ferals, uh, inside kids, and myself, the nuttiest, craziest, most fucked up professor to have walked the face of the earth. You know? uh, bye for now. See you next podcast. Everybody, a little bit of bonus footage. So we've got Agitha there. We've got one of the babies uh, maintaining sort of a social distance on the bed with Agitha. And we've got the other baby there. And I did one more box. This is like all empty now. And there were actual Royal Golden boxes in here, which are now empty, which I'm going to save in, um, uh, in the crawl space. So, um, this cabinet and this cabinet are just about completely and totally done, you know? Uh, and that one is about half done, you know? And this one is, uh, you know, it should be done, but I think there's going to be more figurines that are going to need to go in there. We'll see what the space is like. And this one, there are some praying thingies back there. I put them in the back. I think maybe I should put them in the dining room. I don't want to look at those, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> this is a royal dozen. So, I'm like, okay, uh, th that's enough for today. I was thinking about doing the second box uh, here. But, uh, so, more royal dozen. Oh, yay. You know, more praying thingies. Oh, oh, 
But anyway, I'm like, uh, no, um, I think I'm going to leave that for tomorrow, you know. I've uh, done enough for today. I'll put that in the garage. And um, tomorrow I'll do that. And there are more. There are two, three more boxes, three more boxes in the garage, you know. Um, some of them contain dolls, which I'm not displaying. Actual, like, you know, collector's dolls, not just figurines. But I'm not, I don't think I'm going to display those, but we'll see, you know. Um, uh, we'll see what the space is like. i still got three cabinets. But I'm, I'm pretty sure there's all kinds of uh, crystals and things that are still to come out. And lots and lots of little figurines. You know? So, that's what's happening, you know. Um, I thought I'd just add a little bit of bonus footage. Now I'm going to sit and edit here. And then I'll have to go out um, to the restaurant to upload because I have no data, have very little data left on my phone. Uh, and it takes too long anyway. So from the four, really seven of us, so from uh, that Finn there, that's his favorite spot. Elsie there, very, very comfortably sleeping. And his sister, Agita, very, very comfortable sleeping. And the three... Ferals, <laughs> probably in the shed or under the deck, you know, from the seven of us. So from uh, three inside kids and the, uh, the the three outside kids and myself, the nutty's crazy, most fucked up professor, I've walked the face of the earth. See you on the next podcast.